everybody, what is going on? The boys are back. We're back. We're back, bitch. Can we get close enough to the mic? Yeah, I think they could definitely hear you like five rooms away right now. Okay. <laughs> um, so as you know, we have been gone for a little bit and we just wanted to address that at the top of the show. We have been plotting, we have been scheming, we have been brainstorming, and we're hitting you with like, I wouldn't say Bullduck 2.0, I feel like that's like a year in, but I feel like we're in Bullduck like we, 1.5. We've been, eat, we've been eating the day one patch for a while now, and the devs just were slow on um, slow on that one. It wasn't really, it wasn't like Days Gone where we were getting patched every day. Yeah, yeah So, we, um, we're the, here... The, the patch notes. So we're here to talk now about, uh, kind of our patch notes for Bullduck 1.5. Things are a-changing. First of all... You've been following us. You've been t you've been subbing on Twitch over at Bullduck Gaming. We thank you for that. The Bullduck Gaming Twitch is still going to be active. It's going to be considered the hub, if you will. Yes. Uh, and basically, what that means is we are now going to solely use that channel for like co-op and split-screen games, as well as um, live reacts, such as E3 that's coming up in about two weeks. Um, the Sony State of Plays, Nintendo Directs, those will all still be happening on the Bullduck Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, however, all of our day-to-day, -day, weekly, daily streams, uh, we're going to be doing on our own personal Twitches. But hosted on Bullduck. Yes, it will be hosted on Bullduck. You will be able to watch it there, so you can tune in there, see who's live. Uh, but you can also give us a follow on our separate Twitches, where we will both be streaming and um i have like you know, seven followers you better follow me yeah i mean i mean the grind starts all over for that affiliate that we got with f f asl so um <laughs> you can follow you me over at uh twitch.tv slash bullhammer one word obviously it's a link and uh <laughs> that's for my twitch and brian you are stallion duck 92 yeah I, I, mean, I don't know most of my social medias have the 92 yeah if i could get it without the 92 i don't even know if i should uh, probably just keep it now stallion duck 92. Yeah. yeah for now you can find him at stallion duck 92 and of course if he changes that you can always find him i'm not ninja i can't get one word yeah right i can't be brian pretty sure it's taken can't just be duck that'd be cool so um yeah right match i could just be bull and you could just be duck oh i'm sick um so, of course, if we any changes, anything going on like that, you can always still find us on the Bulldog Twitch. Everything we do will be hosted there. Uh, number one priority, so move over everyone else we host. <laughs> we got to worry about ourselves now. Um, the reason for this is to kind of, like, give our own, like, actual, like, say I stream for a few days. People get interested, they're watching. Then if Andrew streams the next day, I'm sure that someone who doesn't know us like that's like probably like, oh, who the hell is this guy who's just not even being hosted? He's on the channel. And it's kind of like, to me at least, made, made it seem a little confusing. Now this way you can kind of see our own personal cha uh, channels, see how we do things our own ways, but still under the umbrella of Bulldog. Exactly. Uh, and also I think sometimes, like, there would be nights where I'd come home and I'd be like, I'd have a stream in mind and I was like, oh, I can't wait to get home streaming and like... I'd get home, or, like, you'd be streaming, and you'd be playing, like, Life is Strange or something. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, now I'm going to wait till he's done and kind of wait on it and start whenever and kind of throw off the whole night. So having our own individual Twitches um, and keeping it under the Bulldog umbrella, we felt was the best way to kind of handle this going forward. I also thought that playing, like, me playing Persona under the umbrella term of Bulldog was also weird. Because, like, it's, we're getting into, like, deep into a, a solo game like that on a multi-man channel. Yeah. Because it's going to be like, oh, me playing the single player game, then like a bunch of days of multiplayer stuff because me and you would always play together. Yeah. Like I tried keeping it organized in like folders of games. Yeah. But uh, I think from this point going forward, yeah, it would be a lot neater to just do our own channels. Uh, I also feel like it would help bring our personalities out a little more, having the creative freedom of doing our own channels mm -hmm. as opposed to doing Bulldog where we kind of had to keep it more uniform and kind of like keep on trying to keep the same attitude going as each other. Uh, I think this gives us a little more freedom as far as, like, personal creativity and whatever we want to do with our own streams. Um, also be able, well, you'll also be able to tell who's talking to you in chat now because... It'll be one of us. <laughs> and then if the you'll other see one's the in, name. And if the other one's in there, you'll see the other name, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd always, I'd always be logged into my personal account while, say, Andrew's streaming so that I can kind of chime in. Yeah. But... And it wouldn't look like I was talking to myself. Yeah. Um, but the day-to-day -day is... Get, basically, everything's the same. The only thing that's going to be different is the actual playing of video games, unless it's like a split screen game, is it's going to be on our separate channels. Yeah. 
And I don't. I doubt we'll be overlapping our streams. I don't even know. If yeah, I, I don't think our internet could handle that. Yeah, so <laughs> also. you don't have to worry about like, oh, they're both live right now. Yeah, I mean, we all know if we were both live, people would watch me anyway, and not you. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. About that. Um, uh, the also the other change you've probably noticed is that this episode is out on. Uh, well, normally, normally it's going to be Friday. Of course, we're recording this on Friday. This week was a little different. Uh, we went to go see the cinematic masterpiece that was Aladdin last night. That's so, one way to put it. From from now on going forward, the episodes are going to be released on Friday. This episode, of course, coming a little later. Uh, the reason for this is that we felt um, Sunday wasn't really working. You know, in the weekends, there's a lot of room for different things going on, always running around. We have and, lives. <laughs> yeah, and things would always get, like these shows would sometimes get pushed to the side for whatever was going on on the weekends, you know? A lot of Sunday holidays, Mother's Day was a year, you know, like, things like that. Um, Saturday nights, a lot of times we're out and about, and after a full five days, 40-hour work week, and being out Saturday night, I'd wake up on Sunday, and the last thing on my mind was, like, looking through gaming news, and I felt like the episodes weren't what they could have been. Exactly. And going forward, we feel like it would be best to kind of tackle this on a different night, a night that works better for us, and a night where we're kind of more fully focused than, like, a Sunday afternoon or morning. So, um, these will now be recorded either, like, Wednesday or Thursday nights, and they're going to go up on Friday. So you can always find Bold Duck Gaming now in your podcast feeds. Fridays, uh, Thursday nights, if you're, if you're you know, a night, night, night owl. But uh, Fridays will be the official release day. Mm -hmm. And um, so those are the two big changes coming to Bullduck in the 1.5 patch. So individual Twitches and um, the... Uh, I don't know. Oh, I just lost my train of thought. Not to uh, everything. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the podcast feed. So if you want to sub to me and give me money, I'm not even affiliate, so I don't even know if you can do that. No, they can't sub to you yet, but they can follow. If you want my Venmo, just yeah, Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing we're considering, uh, let us know over on Twitter, uh, Bulldog Gaming, if you'd be interested in a live video of the podcast. We are debating also using the Bulldog Twitch for, like, live video and doing the podcast live. So let us know if that's something you'd be interested in. It's something we're considering. You can make a set with your green screen. I think it can make it really, really nice. Yeah, we could probably do something really cool with that. Um, maybe us, like, flying through space with, like, the barrel, 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 barrel for, like... An hour and a half while we talk. I think that would be really, really mm -hmm. fun. And I think a lot of people would be really into that. Yes. Um, so uh, we hope you like the changes. Let us know. Uh, of course, you know, it'll be a little bit of weirdness and growing. You know, for the first week, I kind of have to edit my uh, my Twitch, get it going like I normally would, and get it up to speed with all the bullduck information. I'll and get all to that. it eventually. Yeah, <laughs> that's the motto of this show. We will get to it eventually. And... Uh, it, with that being said, um, I'm excited for these changes, and Brian's going to crack open a cold one with the boys, hope that one got picked and up. we're going to get rolling with the show. So, are you ready, Brian? Are you ready to get into it? Nah. Are you ready to do it? All right, Brian is not ready. I'm we will good. see you see next you week, later. folks. We're going to get on out of here. Goodbye. All right, let's do a show. <laughs> so, uh, first up on the docket, as always, is what we've been playing. Now, of course, we've been gone for a little bit. We've been... Ups to speed on a lot of games. Kind of, Days Gone kind of came and went. I don't even remember if we talked about it on the show. I didn't have any interest in playing that game. Yeah, I played it for a little while. Um, it was perfectly fine. Not a game for me, but I understand now, people when are you, enjoying it. When you first saw at like three E3s ago, the cutscene of him at like the lumber yard, he's like shooting all the zombies, chasing him on the bridge. Did it live up to that kind of hype or no? That game looks. We, um, we were all super hyped in that game when we first saw it, and then it totally just like they showed us. I have had those moments. They showed us the coolest part of the game. Though. Yeah, I have had those moments. From what I heard, I mean, I've probably sunk maybe like 10 to 12 hours in the game. Uh, I've heard that as it goes on, it gets a lot better. Um, it's a game that, like, I'm still playing, but I'm doing it, like, here and there. Like, I'll hop on and I'll play, like, three or four missions, and then I'm like, okay, I'm kind of content on this for now. I'm going to go play something else. Like, it's not a game that I find myself, like... A lot of single-player adventures such as God of War or Horizon or Last of Us where I can't wait to get home every night. It's on my mind. I'm like, man, I can't wait to keep that story going, see where it goes. Like, I, I need to beat it. I don't feel that way. I honestly haven't felt that way about a game since I played Detroit and Spider-Man. 
Spider Man especially, I was fucking in. Yeah. And then and then when I I start when I just, I started Detroit and it was all slow for me and then I came home drunk one day and I was just like, oh fuck, I'm so into this right yeah. now. <laughs> and then since that point, I was like, I'm in. And I fucking just like crushed it in like a day. But like. God of War was a little slow for me. I couldn't. I couldn't get through it. Yeah. I had to finally cut the cord. For me, like last year was such a high of single player gaming, that like like I was struggling so hard with my game of the year. I was like a diehard Spider Man fan, as someone who loved Red Dead Redemption, as someone who never enjoyed God of War and ended up loving it. Like it was so hard to like pick one, and like this year has felt more slow, as far as single player narratives for me. Well, I think everyone's just trying to avoid putting out a. Any game that would even be close to hitting game of the year? Because they know that we're getting Animal Crossing. Exactly. So it's like, why compete? <laughs> why even try? They were like, like, imagine, like some guy like was like, finally, my game's done. And he's like, well, I can't compete with Red Dead. And then 2019 hit, and he's like, well, I can't compete with Animal Crossing. I might as well just wait until 2020 to drop this game. Um, so yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, like I didn't even have it to talk about. I just brought it up because I don't know if we ever mentioned it on the show. Yeah, I have no uh, idea. Days Gone was perfectly normal for me. I, it didn't really do anything for me. I was at like um. Would you rate it? I would give it like a set, like a seven. Would you rate it better or worse than live action Aladdin? Honestly, it's like about the same for me. Like both are like fine for what they are. I think that's the new way we're gonna review games. Is it better than live action Aladdin? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But see, see, that's for me. It's like going forward. For me, it's games are like, like to me, Days Gone is like the line you walk. Like if you're better than Days Gone, you're a good game. If you're worse than Days Gone, you're a bad game. Days Gone is like a perfectly fine game. Like what, it's right in the middle. What it seemed like it, it was like what everyone said, where it's like it's a good game if you want to play that game. Exactly. Yeah. If you're into like survival, like open world games, it didn't do it's anything good. special. But it's not a yeah. bad game. Like, for me, a big thing that hindered it for me was I wasn't a fan of the driving. The driving felt very heavy. That's like a lot of games, like, we, we, the, everyone's been spoiled by either if you're a racing game guy or if you've played GTA, you're just spoiled by great driving mechanics. Yeah. Like any game that throws a vehicle in that's not a driving game... Doesn't live up to those standards. Like, if you, especially, like, going back to GTA, that's essentially a fucking driving game. Like... I mean, I'll be honest, GTA at, at a point online was a racing game. Yeah. No, but... They, like that, was, like everyone's view, like another game like that, hit and run. You think of it as GTA Simpsons, but when you go back in, that's a driving game. Yeah, it's, it's almost exclusively. A driving it's like game. an open world road rage. <laughs> when you really think about it, yeah. Like lesson of the story: don't put cars um, in your games if you don't need cars in your games. <laughs> so, Brian, do you want to start with your first game on the list here? Uh, I have your first game as Dauntless. Yeah, I'll start with Dauntless. Uh, I think I think yesterday I played slightly more than when I played on PC last time. Um, I forgot how, like, they actually, like, put story in it. Like, there was VO in the opening scene, and, like, your character, you're, you're in the ship flying around, and your commander's trying to act tough. Like, they're trying to make this person be a tough person, and I don't really care. But, like, they're doing VO, there's, like, another guy driving the ship who's kind of just, like, kind of, like, rolling his eyes at it. Then, like, the ship crashes for some reason, and, like, this cool action scene. But, like... It, it's literally, it's literally Monster Hunter, but the thing is, Monster so far, at least... It's just better, in my opinion, because Monster Hunter, so many systems, the hunts would honestly take too long. Yeah. Like, every hunt I've done is honestly, like, five minutes, and I'm sure it'll get harder, but, like, that's fine, because, like, I'm a low level right now. I don't know how to play as well right now. Let them be short, so I can just, like, get more and more experience doing it over and over again. Yeah, like, let me learn the mechanics and how it works. But, like, um, I'm having mad fun, like, they have have their own battle pass. Mm Mm-hmm. Which, uh, as soon as I downloaded the game, I just instinctively was like, I'm gonna throw, uh, there's like a bundle for like, I think, a thousand of their credits, which is enough for the battle pass, it was like five bucks, I was like, I'm just gonna get this, and just so I can get their battle pass right off the bat, and not even give a shit what's in it. So, I got that, I did a couple of hunts, they have like the weekly challenges, I saw, it's like, they were like, cool, it's like, oh, do like ten hunts with either the hammer or the axe, I was like, oh, I guess, sick, hated the hammer, liked the, no, it wasn't, it was the, uh, they have like cleaves on chains. It was cool. It's yeah. Shit. But yeah, it's basically. I don't, I don't remember what I used when I played. But like, it, it doesn't really matter what you use. I think you could, as long as you like. Yeah, it's very monster. Monster. Yeah, hunting. you just get another weapon. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I think I saw a guy with guns. I don't know how the fuck you got guns. But, yeah, that's wild. But um, no, it's sick. I like it because like I always liked Monster Hunter, but so like, it was just complicated. Like there were all those items I never used. I never used the cooking. I never used any of like the. Like ammo or anything, mm-hmm. but in this one is like I grab my sword and I'm fucking in. 
Yeah, um, I had played, and I think we both played Dauntless when it was very early on PC. It was about the time of Detroit Become Human coming out, um, and we had played it on PC, and I, like, enjoyed my time with it. I remember certain battles that I'd done in it. Like, it, it was memorable. Uh, but for me, like, the Monster Hunter style just isn't my thing. I like, I prefer that. games where kind of keeps the action going, and it's not just, like, a segmented, like, do this fight, all right, fight's done, go back to town. Oh, you can't afford any cool shit, you gotta have to grind a lot of fights to get cool shit, and I was, I was over it. My, my thing is, I've wanted a game that I can kind of just, like, continuously grind in and just get, like, this big, beefy character. Mm -hmm. I've never been one for MMOs, because I've just refused to pay, like, $15 a month. I think that's literally crazy. Yeah. But, like, this one seems like I can just, like, slowly build up my character. That's cool. And um, launched with full crossplay across everything, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Came out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been enjoying it. Yeah. The only thing, my one complaint, and I don't even think this is a console problem because I have a 4K TV and a Pro. The maybe it's like the frames, or I don't know if it's just the game, but like, say like standing still needs to like, rotate the camera, doesn't really look smooth. Really? Yeah. That's it may, weird. It might just be, like, new game problems. I know they've been having a lot of problems with servers. Yeah, I'm sure they'll patch it. Like, I went to... Go, I was in a queue the other day that said it was, like, a four-hour queue. It's like... All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Guess I'm waiting in this thing. Um, so... Tell us about some... Yeah. Super Blood Hockey? For, uh, yeah, so I'll go for my first game. Uh, it's a game on Switch. I was kind of like... You know when you're just in the mood for, like, a new game? And you just kind of browse the Switch store and, like, see what catches your eye. I have something. I bought, like, three games in the last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll, me, too. And one of them was Super Blood Hockey. Um, for those of you who don't know what Super Blood Hockey is, it is um, basically exactly uh, the old uh, Ninten uh, NES, Super NES Ice Hockey. It's basically, like, literally that. It's, it's like more a Super Nintendo. Yeah, well, it's the same kind of deal. It's, like, the pixely, like, hockey, like type thing where there's, like, the three types of characters. There's, like, the big brawlic guy, the skinny speedster, and, like, the all-around. Um, and, but basically, it's, like, that combined with, like, NHL hits or, like, MLB Slugfest, if you're familiar, where it's, like, oh, yeah. those I violent know, sports, sports games, games where you, it's, like, those violent, crazy sports games that used to exist on, like, N64 and GameCube where you'd, like, beat the absolute fuck out of each other. So, the entire thing is that, like, when you play the franchise mode is that you start, it's, like, this the blood hockey league and you sign up for it and you can't afford the team, so they take one of your kidneys to give, <laughs> to give you the team. And you're like, wake up in the you wake up in the coach's room, and you have like x amount of money. You have to go on the computer and browse all the prisoners as like the roster. Oh, There's prisoners! Like, yeah, the, yeah. All the players in the league are prisoners. Oh, I didn't know that. Part. Yeah. So um, <laughs> you go th you go through, and there's like 99 of them, and you can go through the list. See what positions you want. The more are they the better guys are more money. Randomly generated? Or are they always like yeah, they're randomly guys? generated. Um, they all have different kinds of names. They're like, I, I I picked, it's kind of like a World Cup deal. Like, I picked the American team. So all the guys' names are, like, foods. Like, I have a guy whose name is, like, Puffy Yams. And there's another guy that's, like, like, let me see like those, squibbly let, squid, like let squash me see them or something. Puffy yams. Yeah. Now, are they competing for their freedom? <laughs> um, I forgot what it is if they're competing for their freedom. But, like, you can go on, like, the roster report and you see what they're all in jail, jail for. And some of them are, like, ridiculous. It's, like, conspiring to, like conspiring to, like, disagree with government. It was, like, the stupidest thing. Oh, it's nothing, like, nothing, like, gross or dark. No, yeah, yeah. They're all, like, in jail for, like, stupid things. Um, Is there any of them just say, like, murder? Yeah, I think <laughs> Se so. Second-degree murder. Um, so, like, you build your roster. Uh, as the games progress, like, as you play games, your guys get, like, um, like brain damage, which is, like, a stat. And when As it gets higher, they're at more risk of injury. So you want to do stuff, like, um, for their weekly or their daily activity, you have them hit the showers. And that's like a releases brain damage and lowers that. So you're always managing your team. They can eat uh, one out in the shower. You manage their diets. Like guys can be underweight and overweight, and you can choose to give them more or less food. Uh, there's also in the back alley. There's a guy who's selling drugs, and he sells like burners or steroids or like weed. Like the weed will cure brain damage. The burners like make your guy like lose a lot of weight if he's huh. over. Weed cures brain damage. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, hey man, those stem cells. So, uh, it's cool like that, and it's a very fun franchise mode, and it's sad that it's, like, a deeper franchise mode than a lot of sports I've played. Like, in Madden, I can't, like, really control my roster and, like, make, like you know what I mean? Choose what they do every day to upgrade stats. Like, it, it's cool. I, I like it a lot. Um, and then the hockey is basically hockey, and it's fun. Like, you're just constantly trying to get, like, these one-timers and passing it and, like, trying to get these crazy shots off. How's the music? Um, the music is fun. It's catchy. 
And then uh, the fu- the really cool aspect is, because uh, uh, I know you're not a sport guy, there's something in hockey called a power play, which is basically like if a guy gets a penalty, he goes in the penalty box and they are a man down on the ice and it becomes like five on four, yeah. five on three. So the way it works in Blood Super Blood Hockey is that if you've checked, if like there's been enough checks back and forth, it starts a fight. Where it's literally all out and everybody's beating the shit out of each other. Oh, there's a full-on brawl, not 1v1. Yeah, no. And the last team standing wins and goes on the power play. And the other team has a guy who got, like, it'll show one of their guys injured. And he literally sits on the ice bleeding out for, like, the entire period or the entire game, depending on the severity of the injury. <laughs> like, I Can got... you run into them or are they just there and you just, like, go through them? Like, is he an obstacle? Yeah. Like if you throw the, if you hit the puck into him, is it gonna bounce off him yes. or just go through? Uh, yeah, no, it bounces off him. A lot of times <laughs> if the a lot of times if the puck runs into them they get it. So it's like they intercepted the puck. Um, no, I mean like the downed guy. Oh, no, yeah, they're an obstacle. Like the puck will just whack into him. Does and the, they'll just be like sliding on the ice, like bleeding out. Does the puck do more damage to them when they're down? I don't think so. <laughs> like, I think it's just for oh, comedy. It's like, psh, oh and then, <laughs> um, the like it was crazy. I got in my first season, I got to the championship game and uh we, they were beating us, like, 3-1, and we scored. It was 3-2. And we got in, like, two back-to-back consecutive fights. Like, we kept beating them to, and injuring their guys to the point where it was literally my entire team versus one of their guys. They had one guy left on the roster who wasn't hurt. And we literally just scored on him time and time again to win the championship. Like, they just ran out of guys. It was crazy. Was it 1v5? Uh, yeah, pretty much, because I injured all their guys. Was it at least their goalie that was alive still? Yeah, no, yeah, the goalie's always alive. The goalie doesn't participate in fights. Uh, do you control the goalie, or is it more... No, goalie's auto. That's cool. Yeah, so it, it's I fun. F- I feel like in, like, a game like that, like, if you're just too good at goalie, uh, being a goalie, like, no one can ever Yeah, no chance. one can ever do anything. So I feel like the, the auto goalie sounds fun. Yeah. I, I mean, I heard about that game on other podcasts, and I'm not even a sports guy, and, like, I looked it up, I was like, this always looks cool. It's a good time. It's a game, like, there's one day I have to bring my Switch home, because I kind of just always keep it in my locker. And, uh, is it multiplayer? Yeah, it's split screen. Like we could actually do like a franchise, I think, in both players of the team, and like that would be the fun. dual coaches. Yeah, literally. Um, is it actually two coaches? Yeah. Fucking crazy. Right now, I think when you just go to like play, like you could move the second player person onto your team and play as them. That's sick. Uh, yeah. So moving on to your next game on the list, uh, Saints Row Three. The full package. The full on package Switch. on Switch. Well, play it in uh, handheld. Yeah. So I. Uh, I I've kind of pulled the trigger on this one. I was like, my birthday came up. Let me give myself a present. Saints Row. It's been a while. It's like, yeah, I could buy it on PC, but like handheld handheld Saints Row. That sounds fun. And like I saw, it got like it got like okay reviews. But like what, the one thing I saw in the reviews that struck me as really odd was like they were like, as long as you play it in handheld, this is like a great time or something like that. I was like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. And then I got it, and oh! You found out what oh that meant. Oh boy! <laughs> do not play it on the screen, because it's like I th- like I know it wasn't like a remake or even like a st- legitimate like a remaster, yeah. but this is like legitimately like a, a 360 or PS3 game. Oh yeah! Like it's not H- it doesn't seem HD. Yeah, it like, looked pretty bad from the little bit I saw. Thing like thing like edges are literally like not smooth. There's blurry shit like. But then you play it in handheld, then, like, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Because, like, just, like, the screen size, and, like, I think it runs at 720. I think it runs at... I feel like it's 720 on the, on the big screen, too, which is probably the problem. Yeah, I would imagine but so. Yeah. It's Saints Row. It, it, the shooting feels like shit, like it always did. I think but the problem, too, is fun. that, like, on, like, in docked mode, you notice that it's not, like, HD textures. Like, you know what I mean? They look very, like, flat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, it's literally, like, the... The straight up rip from like, oh the yeah games. no doubt but yeah it's still Saints Row still fun now knowing more of the games industry like I started off as the girl because like, I've never made the girl before didn't yeah. like the voice acting but like I know voice one for the males is Troy Baker so it's like now that I know who that is I feel like I'll totally appreciate the voice acting more yeah also I was debating on making just a zombie voice for the entire game but I don't see know how if, that goes I don't, I don't want to do that yeah but it's fun the third one is probably the best one is that the one with the zombie island yeah 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 that one rules. The crazy melee finishers for yeah. no fucking... That, that's what... When you're getting pinned down, you just gotta run around and do that. But, like, I'm so used to the controls of 4, where yeah. guns are almost not necessary. Like, I would run my superpower and the dubstep gun. That's yeah, it. that's all you needed. But, like, now going back to, like, the same feel of game and, like, having to drive and having to shoot, 
it feels so weird. Yeah. But it also makes me miss Saints Row, and I hope that they come back. When did that game come out? Like 2009, 2010. I have no Saints Row Three. I have no idea. Probably around. It's got to be like I a think around twenty. Game. It might be twenty eleven, maybe twenty ten or eleven. Okay. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, look it up, and I'll talk more about it. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's still funny. Fucking. They didn't hit me with any. November twenty eleven. I don't know if they. Hit, I can't remember if they hit me with any licensed music yet. You know, Saints Row and their licensed music. Oh, of so course. The best. See what I. Well, was, that that one is the great end song. I need a hero. <laughs> Holding out for a hero. But um, what they really need to do, I think, is they need to somehow keep a mixture of like the straight, like kind of like GTA esque shooting driving game. Yeah. But maybe still find a way to give me like powers, but on a lighter side, to where I'm not like OP as hell. Mm-hmm. And like I don't want I don't want to super jump over buildings. I don't want to fly. Like I want the cars and planes to still be valid. But I also want to have powers. Yeah, that was kind of my crux on 4 that I didn't like. was like, I loved the superpowers and they were fun. But it almost didn't feel like Saints Row just because I did not use cars. I did not use guns. Like, it was only all in those superpowers. Certain, only in the certain missions, too. Yeah. It almost felt akin to, like, a like prototype or, like, one of those games where I'm just fucking like running around the city like a, like a freak. Like I'm, Wasn't, like, like the hub spaceship kind of, like, making fun of, like, Mass Effect? Like, you yeah. Like, fuck everyone. You could, like, romance everyone. Like, <laughs> and yeah. it was always, like, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. You could romance Pierce on the ship. It was, oh, like... <laughs> so nothing... No, uh, when did that game come out? Like, 2013, 2014 or something? Yeah, probably, like, 2014. Nothing was more appealing to, like, uh... 20 year old Brian then when you have tried to romance Kinsey and she slaps you in the face and jumps on you it's like oh fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. That was going down. <laughs> but yeah Saints Row 3 if you want to play it handheld that's like a solid game to have as a handheld yeah yeah I would but, not play it in docked mode though but don't yeah don't play it in docked which is upsetting because I did want to stream it but I don't, yeah. I don't know if I can do it yeah I, really I, I can see that it's it's rough it really is also they had the thing they, they always had the great mechanic of like I can actually like shoot dive roll and then keep shooting again like they were always tight. Yeah, like, they, all... th- those were good. Yeah, I do remember those, and I remember that's why I enjoyed like the zombie island, just dropping myself in there and like surviving for mad long. Like the uh, the running around feels good. Just I don't know the way that they have like their sensitivity when you're aiming. Yeah, like I couldn't get it to be like like how Fortnite is just so smooth. Yeah, like I can't even get it remotely like that. Maybe mm-hmm. I may have to tweak it some more, but good game. Always a, always a classic fave. They they always uh. Had great soundtracks too. They got the Adult Swim station. They got the heavy oh, station. Oh yeah, that's right. And then they always have like the actual like relevant to uh, like shit we like in terms of clothing. Yeah. Like denim vests and like lip piercings and shit. Like that was always like oh. Like, I they had like the Hot Topic parody store you can go in. Nobody loves me. Or yeah. Something like that. And it's like a, the logo is like a heart being cut by like a razor or something. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the the shoes my character started with are just like high tops and it's called emo sneaks it's like uh these guys got me as a young boy <laughs> yeah right like they really nailed it back when, like because those, those were our teen years yeah and they really nailed like that culture that so nobody on, else was really nailing on their radio they have fucking after the burial and blackville brides yeah it's like... Like, that's wild <laughs> um so for my next game uh you've been playing it too kind of a dual game, is For the King. Holy shit, this game is good. Yes. Uh, this was the second game I bought when I was looking through the Switch store for games. I can't believe we never heard of this game before this. Um, it was PC, right? It was on PC. It just recently came out on console. Um, so basically, I was browsing the Switch store. I got Super Blood Hockey, and I stumbled across this game. And I saw that it said it was a board game, and it was like a tabletop RPG. And I was like, you know, this sounds interesting. I'll give it a shot. And I didn't try it for like a week because I was playing Blood Hockey. And I finally jumped in, and it's hard to describe. It's almost like a and d video game, where in the sense of, like, it's a campaign, you're on this giant board, there's so many classes between, like, being, like, a blacksmith who's, like, a melee weapon guy, a hunter who's, like, an archer, um, it's basically a, a, a mage. Tur- it's a turn-based RPG that's also a board game. Basically. Yeah, and, and it's co-op online, which, when I played it on Switch and realized that, and playing through the game, I was like... Holy shit, I need to tell the guys about this. This is a game we have to get everybody on board with. And we played it almost like the entire weekend. Last weekend. Like, we were having so much fun with it. We're in the, I'm in the middle of, like, three campaigns. There's one where it's just me and John. There's one where it's me, John, and Brian. There's one where it's me, Brian, and Tom. And, like, we're in different points. We're doing different campaigns. There's, like, five or six of them. Um, the game does have its flaws. It's a little bit buggy. There's been some crashes. Um, the weird black screen where it looks like unknown Pokemon are flying by at some points. Yeah. There's been issues, but, like, I've never played a game like this where it's like a turn-based combat co-op 
online experience and like it is so much fun. I want more turn-based multiplayer. Like, because we're sitting there and we're being strategic about it where it's like, okay, this guy's resistant to, to magic, so I'm going to hit him. And then, Brian, you're going to go for that guy. And then, my, uh, John, you're going to get this guy. And we get very, like, in-depth and, like, there is strategy there. And it's so much fun playing it with other people where normally you'd play it and you'd do it your way. Mm-hmm. And in this way, it's like, I have to worry about, like, what if Brian wants to go hit that other guy? And now we have to worry about, like, oh, they, now this guy's going to attack us for more. And, yeah, man, it's so much fun. And, like, there's... It's also, like, it's has the, it has the loot system of, like, a Destiny and Borderlands where it's, like, the uncommons and the rares and the blues and the purples. And, man, this game's just a blast. Like, I'm having so much fun. I want to get back into our campaign with John because my blacksmith is so fucking strong. Yeah. That's, my, that's the one with my hunter where I just have, like, a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I am liking the bard, though. Like, also, I'm getting the, very into the bard. Also, the art is gorgeous. I believe it's by the guys who did Human Fall Flat. Yes. So, like, it's basically that same kind of art style, but, like, the lighting is definitely better. The textures are definitely better, because, like, Human Fall Flat didn't really have much much art. Yeah, but it was... But you could, but, like, if you look at them side by side, you could definitely tell it's the same artists putting a little bit more work into, Especially like, the Especially in the main menu. Like, the landscapes look the same. Yeah. They're, like, very Human Fall Flat. It's, like, very polygonal, but also very smooth. Yeah. Like, if you're into board games or, like, turn-based RPGs... That is like my highest recommendation for this week is for the king. Like this game is fantastic. It 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 scratches the itch that Armello would always give me, but we're not competing. Yeah. We're on the same team. It's co op and it's relaxing. Yeah, because like um, I feel like I could like eat a meal and play that game with you guys. Oh, absolutely. Also, a good thing about it uh, compared to uh, other like board game video games is like your turns don't take forever. Like, we'd play our mellow and we'd always be thinking about our turns and shit, and it's like, oh, you done yet? It's been five minutes. Can you be done? Yeah, like, in, in what... this, sometimes it's like, oh, I won five spots, your turn. Yep. And it's mad nice. It's It keeps the pace going. Because it's not competitive. Yeah. We have, it, all, we have all the time we need. Exactly, and it's a very, very well done game. Um, now, for you, I have one last game for you, and that is Team Sonic Racing. Team Sonic Racing fucking rules. It is surprisingly good. Especially like like coming from a company who puts out ass games. Yeah, know? like consistently like Sonic games have not been up to par. And Team Sonic Racing has just been a blast. I mean, I am here for the kart revival genre in 2019 and 2020. Like I'm about it. Like I've never really been a big Crash Bandicoot guy, but I'm down for Crash Racing. I'll give it a shot. The thing about Team Sonic Racing is um so their main mode is the the team race. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, teams of 3. I believe there will be four teams cuz I think it's all the only characters they have in the game. <laughs> Is 12. Yeah. Um, and you have to actually work as a team. Like, whoever's in first, whoever's ahead furthest on your team will have a slipstream constantly. And if you ride in it for a little bit and then leave it, it slingshots you ahead. And that gives you team points. I don't think there's a slider for team points, which is really fucking annoying. Yeah. They need to add one. I think it might be a glitch, honestly. Mm. Because when you activate your ultimate, it shows the slider going down. No, I think that slider's always there. I've seen it. It's behind your car. It's always kind of going up. It's like right behind your car, where it is when you get your ultimate. It's like the triangle. I'll have to look. That. Yeah, maybe it's I'm like a glowing bar. It's like right. It's pretty a, much like on your bumper. Maybe I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. It's is like it, right is it physically on the car? Uh, I don't think it's physically on the car, but it's like right around there. I mean, I played the game once, like three though. nights ago. But also, another thing you could do is if you grab an item, you can transfer it to one of your teammates, which also gives you more team points. Yeah. And once you get your team points all the way up, you get to use your ultimate, and it's basically just a giant fucking speed boost. Mm-hmm. But like the biggest, like that's just like a unique way to race, and like it actually, it's like fun. Like we had trouble connecting. I think they were, ha- I think they're having some online issues. Yeah, definitely. But like. We can play online as a team, and it's like, team games are more fun, because, like, I don't want to verse you online, we're in the fucking same party. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's not, it's it's stressful. Yeah. And, like, honestly, I will say that, like, the game is challenging. Like, online is, like, I won, I played maybe, like, 15 races, I won one. People are good, it, it, the driving is good, the item, like, the game has a fucking style. Yeah. Like, the music is, like, you know, the Sonic team has always been about the music. Yeah. Like... They, they know they put out the fucking butt rock, but you know what? If they didn't, it wouldn't be fucking Sonic games. Exactly. It's, it's a personality. It's so, they're so fucking long. Um, the car customization is great. Dude, I got all gold for my Sonic car. Did you? It, it's weird to me. It's like, I feel like I'm getting nonstop legendary items, and it's like, is the game like supposed to be doing this? Like, it feels weird that it's just dropping. There's a lot of legendary items. Like, yeah. I think a third of your items are legendary, so like, it doesn't matter. Like, I keep getting a fuck ton of like the Knuckles ones. Yeah, I got, like, med Sonic ones. Yeah. I have options of, like, I think there's, like, two or three variant, like, 
I have the hyper engine, and then I have the legendary hyper engine, which is only I think it's like yeah. the same exact engine, but yeah, it's just gold. gold. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, and that's the other weird thing. I feel like everything I'm unlocking is continues to be for like the same character. Like all I'm getting is Knuckles and Eggman stuff. Um, it, that was that for me until I played online. It was literally only giving me Sonic stuff. And then yeah. Once I, and then once I guess my game saw the other characters on the board, then it started giving me like Big and the Chows. And yeah, yeah. Can't wait to play as the Chows. Yeah, right. They sound mad fun. Um, Who's driving? <laughs> it's like four of them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fucking party in that car. Like, what's happening in that car right now? But, like, it, wait, I've been seeing it getting, like, eights and eight, eight fives, and that's pretty much where I think it lands. Yeah, like, exactly. And it's good. I, I, th- I think... I'm surprised. I think one of the things is, like, you know, the only kart racer that's been around is Mario Kart, and it's nice to have a refreshing take, and it's ni- nice to not have a game that's, like, a super dependent on you have to drift at every turn. And, like, the items are more varied... Where it's like, in Mario Kart, you get, like, penalized for being in first place. It's like, yep. you only get bananas. And meanwhile, if you're in last, you get, like, items that speed you all the way to the front. In, so- in Team Sonic Racing, I was in first, and I kept getting items that kept pushing me further in front. Yeah, you got, was like, great. you got the item that's the equivalent to the bullet bill. Yeah, it's like, because <laughs> I'm place. racing well, why should I be punished? I think it's based on how many rings you have. Yeah, which would make sense. Another thing I noticed that they do better than Mario Kart, in my opinion, is you, know, you get the drift boost... But it doesn't activate till you straighten back out. Yeah, yeah. In Mario Kart, as soon as you like let off the drift, it just goes, and you kind of like yeet You're one way to the walls and shit. Yeah, but yeah. like in this one, like it, like once you straighten out, it kind of activates, and it's nice. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying the game, and I I'm honestly excited to play more of it. Yeah, just want them to fix mix the online a little more stable. Yeah. Um, for my next game, uh, I have jumped back into Sea of Thieves, and that has been my main game lately. Like, holy shit has this game been fun. I always loved Sea of Thieves. Like, when it launched, I played the shit out of it. And I forgot what came out, that I kind of just moved to the next thing, and I was like, I love this game, but I'm going to give it a lot of time. Like, it needs a lot more content. It needs, like, more there. It's very bare bones right now. And coming back after, like, a year, like, the content is so good. Like, there's uh, not only Skull Forts, now there's, like, the Ghost Ships... Yeah. Where you, you fight them on. We were doing some of those the other night, and they're a challenge, and they're fun. Isn't like, I like literally a... jumped on board their ship with the explosive barrel, ran below, and then started fighting off skulls so they couldn't repair. Like, Is it the... was a blast. Are the boat battles out yet? Well, like, arena mode? Yeah. Yeah, arena mode's out. I only played, like, one match. It was very stressful, and I it was, like, literally the first thing I did coming back to the game was... Josh jumped in an arena mode. I was like, I have no clue what the fuck I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, when I played with Josh, he brought me into, like, pirate legend quests where, like, the island is erupting. Yeah. Constantly. So, you're, like, you're literally just dying by being on the island yeah. and stuff. It's like, ah. Um, yeah, there's legendary quests we've been working on. Fishing. There are now Tall Tales, which I haven't done any of, but I really want to, where they're, like, very long quests. And they're, like, a book. And it's literally, like, a book with, like, different things going on. It's not just, like... The usual, here's a piece of paper. Is there only a set amount out. of Tall Tales, or you can just keep doing them? Uh, I, don't, I think you can keep doing them, but there's a set like number of them. Do they, do they have like unique rewards to each tale? Or? Yeah. And I think there's... Josh was telling me that there's like bonus objectives you can do to get like cool hats or like cannons for your ship or like cool shit like that. Yeah, I also noticed that like the like things like your steering wheel and like your anchor like wheel can like you can... You can buy new versions of that now, yeah. too. Also, they added a lot more destructibility to the ship. Yeah, uh, like I blew up the mast. <laughs> yeah, all three of the masts can fall. Um, also, your steering wheel can break and the anchor thing. And you literally have to put planks of wood in there to fix them. <laughs> so you can turn them again. That's great. Uh, yeah, like like with the wheel, the wheel will turn very slowly until you put those planks of wood in and fix it. That's great. So, like, it's, it, it is fun. Um, also, the, like, using the three-man ship has been interesting. Still haven't seen it. It's very cool. Uh, it's very stressful. Like, we had somebody quit out, and there were two of us, but of course, you know, we had the three-man ship. It was stocked up. We were like, let's just keep running with this. And uh, it was not fun, because we started fighting a ghost ship. Ooh. I went on board the ship to explode it. I exploded it. Uh, Josh was down below patching holes and didn't realize that the, the flags were still down, the sails, and we were barreling away. <laughs> so, fucking, I died and came back, and we could not find the boat that we sank, because... We just kept sailing away from it while he was patching when shit you, up. When like you it sink, was, when it you was sink, a lot to do with a three-man ship. When you sink ship. a skeleton ship, does it become like a sunken ship and you can go raid it? Um, it's basically like like loot floats to the top and oh, then you okay. pick up the loot and like that stuff. 
Um, do you, if you sink the boat but don't kill the skeletons, do they die or do they just try to swim onto your boat? No, I think they die. I'm pretty sure it's like you sunk it, you won. Uh, but there can be waves. Like if you go, like you know, how in the skull fort there's a cloud and you yeah. sail with the cloud, uh, you'll see a skull with a ship, and you'll be I've waves seen, of ships you have to fight. I've seen a, a cloud in the shape of a ship. That's what it is. <coughs> and you sail towards those. And if you harpoon them, they can't get away. Um, they added harpoons too. They added harpoons. Harpoons will help you stay with them. Like, if you harpoon the ship, I don't think they're attached to you, but, like, your ship will follow them, kind of. Like, it's attached. Um, can they, I wonder if they can break... Also, the harpoons really clutch for, like... The shark, which is now a random event. The looting. It can pick up loot. So, like, it'll be really nice. We'll do a shark. We'll do, a, like, a skull fort. I'll be bringing the stuff out, putting it on shore. Can I pick and we up... have a man on harpoon just picking the stuff can up. Can I pick up these supply barrels you find? The explosive barrels? No, like, when you're floating sound of the sea and there's just, like, a barrel of bananas... And you Probably. Can, you can jump. Maybe. I haven't tried that. Yeah, did you know that, though? The shark isn't in a, isn't the quest anymore? Yeah, no, they're out in the wild. Fuck we found them, yeah. Oh, man. They're nothing, though. They're not like the Kraken. The Kraken's rough. Yeah, because you can't move with the Kraken. Yeah. The shark, you can at least fuck the off. The shark, you yeah, Like, we'll be swimming. They'll pop up. I'll be like, fuck you. I like, hit them three times and so we dip. Like, <laughs> but uh, I'm having a blast on that game. There's so much for me to do. I never became, like, Pirate Legend. And that, like, I'm around rank 30 in all, all the factions, so I still have a way to go. But like, oh, it's 50, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm like 20s. It's been a blast just like playing. It's a relaxing game to play with the guys. I, it's a crime that we can't play this with our PS4 friends. Because I know the four of us would have a blast playing Sea of Thieves. Tom would love it. And it just sucks that like... I mean, I play on PC. We've been It's been fun playing with like guys we don't always play with. Yeah, my, my thing is I don't like playing... I, I don't have an Xbox. I got rid of it. I don't want to play Xbox Live. So I play it on my laptop. And like my graphics are fine and all. I don't like having to sit at my laptop. Yeah. And, like, I don't have an Xbox. I mean, if you really want, my, my, my Xbox is collecting dusk. You can log in and set it up. Xbox Live. Yeah. You gotta have Live to play it. Yep. I'm hoping it comes to Switch. Um, and just the last little thing I wanted to touch on as far as what we've been playing is uh, I've been jumping back into Rocket League a little bit. Always kind of been playing it, but uh, I'm really starting to get the grind on that Battle Pass. And it's just always a game that, man, it continues to be fun. Uh, I have another game boat also. Yeah. Hit yeah. us. Hit us, man. I got Cuphead on Switch. Yeah? Not that good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you've been playing I can't, that. I, yeah. can't, I, I, I crushed through Island 1. Uh, the blue blob, easy as fuck. The, uh, the airplane boss, it's way too fucking hard. Not excited for more of those. Mm -hmm. The frogs are easy. The vegetables are easy. The, the daisy is easy. But then Island 2, man. Oh, the running gun levels can fuck off. Yeah, yeah. All you motherfuckers out there that wanted them to have running, le like, uh, like platforming levels, fuck you all can fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boss rush was the way to go. These yeah. levels are not fun. They're stupid. Yeah. They're, I wish it they're was, terrible. I wish it was bosses only. And, like, it hinders you from buying upgrades. Yeah. Because you need those fucking coins. Yeah, you and have to do them. I think I bought stupid things in the beginning. Probably. We all do. It's exciting to buy fun things, and then when they're stupid, you feel bad. Like, I didn't buy another gun type. I bought the the smoke bomb instead that makes you, like, go invisible. And, like, yeah. It's like, you get, you're not getting hit by it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was fighting, I'm fighting those, this one boss. He's, like, a clown, and, like, he turns into, like, a, a roller coaster train that kind of comes at you. So you have to, like, be jumping from car to car while he's shooting projectiles at you. God and damn. It's like, fuck. And then I, I know that's the point. But like, oh, it's like a, it's like me and I play Splatoon in like rounds of three minutes. After I like play like the one and a half, two minute uh, failure attempts at a boss in Cuphead, and I do it ten times, like, oh, I feel like I've had my fucking fill. Mm -hmm. That's the days gone problem. You can do it a couple times, you're like I'm good. Um, yeah, Cuphead's great. Support it so we can get more Xbox games on Switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Basically. that'd be great. I think there is going to be more coming. I think but, Sea of Thieves. Um, okay, now it is time for the news. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. Usually you hit with, like, the soft. You're kind of like, news. But that was pretty soft. You hit us with that gas. Uh, okay. New story number one. The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, and Ghost of Tsushima are still PS4 bound. Ghost uh, of Tsushima. Uh, I picked this one up from Games Radar from Josh West. And it's uh, the quote I have here says... Uh, in it steps to outline what Sony calls the critical role of the PS4 in a presentation that was leaked this morning, the company noted that the system will remain the engine of engagement and profitability for the next three years, and going on to note that there is still an outstanding roster of exclusive AAA games still to come. Alongside the statement are placeholder box art images for The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, and Ghost of Tsushima. Once again, reaffirming previous reports that these blockbuster titles are still bound for current-gen systems, all likely to launch within the next three years, if not before. 
It's also worth noting that these titles will be playable on PS5, with Sony making a lot of noise about its commitment to backwards compatibility. We will leverage backwards compatibility to transition our community to next-gen faster and more seamlessly than ever before. A slide reads in the presentation, which then goes on to mention that the PS4 will provide the fertile early adopter gaming base critical for next-gen success. Well, this is fucking... duh. Yeah, uh, They have almost 100 million of these things out there. Of course they're going to put these games on it. Yeah, the reason I kind of put this in there was... Uh, you know, obviously, we're on the road to next gen. Mm-hmm. I don't really think it's going to be big at this E3. Um, I do have predictions, and I think we'll talk about that um, in a couple, in two weeks when we do a prediction episode. Um, but for me, it's more like uh, this is going to be a first as far as console transitions, where it is going to be immediate backwards compatibility, and we, it's not going to be the stigma anymore of like uh, console launch and here's some launch titles that are games that aren't really that good but are kind of like show off how good the system looks. Yeah, like, I don't know how many people bought Rise, Son of Rome on Xbox One. I mean, like, <laughs> my first game I played, I, on PS4, I, the first two games I bought were Infamous Second Son and, like, NBA 2K14. I didn't even care about NBA, it just looked so good. I was like, I'll play this. <laughs> it was nothing to really play at the time. And it's like, I'm glad we're not going to have that, where it's like, I can just still have my PS4. I remember the awkward thing of I was my first friend to get a PS4, and I still had to have the PS3 hooked up because I'd be playing PS4 all day and everyone would be like, oh, we're hopping on GTA Five on PS3 and I'd have to switch on over Yep. to still play with the boys. But yeah, it's like, it's basically why Nintendo kept the 3DS alive so long. You have so many, you have so many units out there, yeah. you'd be dumb not to. Um, this is even better because, like, if everything's backwards compatible, like, PS4 is going to stay relevant for so long. Now, let's play a little guessing game. Uh, I'm gonna hit you with the titles. I want you to get like guess a window of when the game's gonna come out. Uh, we'll start first with Death Stranding. If you were to throw a ballpark at me right now, when do you think Death Stranding's coming out? I don't know. If you ask Kojima, he'd probably be like, "It already started. It's already out. Yeah, it's already out, man. Um, it's already going on." My thing is, I think it's not for a long time. We haven't seen gameplay. We've mm. seen stuff that totally looks like gameplay, yeah. but like. It was just walking. Show me combat, because I know there's combat, yeah. which maybe we'll see in the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. But um, late Very 20... Possible. Maybe, uh, I think 2021 for that game. You think 2021? We haven't you seen... it's still two years out? At least for like Ghost of Tsushima, we saw like what a fight Well, I'm just, like. I'm just going Death Stranding right now. Yeah, Death I'm gonna Stranding go one I think by is one. 21. Okay. 2021. Um, I can't even give a, a, a quarter because... I'm going to say fall 2020. I think that's going to be PS4, PS5's... Uh, kind of Breath of the Wild, where it's kind of releases on both, and it's kind of like, you know, if you're not getting a PS5 yet, you can play it on your PS4, but with your PS5, it's going to look better, it's going to play better, it's going to be faster. I think that's like the game they're going to launch with. If you launch with a Hideo Kojima game, like, you're going to fucking sell it crazy. That's my prediction. Um, Last of Us 2. I think this year. You still th- you think it's this year? I think it's later this year. For like fall, you thinking? In time for Christmas. I don't know. I don't know about fall specifically because we don't know what's up with Call of Duty and, and uh, Battlefield. But um, some sometime before Christmas for the holidays. Okay, I'm gonna say early 2020 for Last of Us. I think um, Sony's proven over the years with uh, Horizon and God of War that they love hitting that early year window. Um, they kind of stay away from holidays, Black Fridays, and all that. Um, I think they know they Last of Us 2 is going to sell like crazy. And I think that's the game they want to put as, like, in that game of the year position of, like, a February, March, where they've put Horizon, where they've put God of War. You know what I mean? Where they, their games shine in those months. And well, I think they want Last of Us to A big thing for game of the year, though, is honestly, like, if you put your game out towards the end of the year, it's it's in the, t- it's in the conversation just naturally. Like, are, is there, like, it's, yeah, it's but I don't, thing I don't think Last of Us needs to just be a naturally in the conversation. I think that's, I mean, God of War came out and was Game of the Year, and that came out in March. Yeah, it's true. Like, it's I true. think Last of Us is a big enough game that it'll hit that window, and you're going to be talking about it at Game of the Year thing. It's not like a, like a Mario Odyssey where it's like, well, this comes out two months ago, so it's going to be in the Game of the Year conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima, I think you'd agree with me that that one's furthest away. I, I, my, really? My guess is, like, March of next year. You say March of next year for that? Yeah. Because the thing is, we we saw a, a small slice of it. Like a demo, yeah. But it was super polished. 
Yeah, but how much of the game besides that could be super? How long is the game? We don't know. I'm going to say that one is early 2021. I'm thinking they're going to hit early 2020 with Last of Us, late console launch with Death Stranding, and then a few months later, it's like, hey, we're keeping the PS5 hits coming. Here's Ghost of Tsushima. My big thing with the Death Stranding mm. is, like, isn't Kojima, like, notorious for taking a long time? And yeah. After, and after whatever the hell happened... But Konami, how long has it been already? Four years? Yeah, I mean... Hearing about this game? The thing is, now that he's on his own, like, didn't Konami, like... He took a long time to make Metal Gear games, and Konami and Konami hated it, right? Oh, absolutely. So now that he's on his in his own company, I feel like he's gonna just, like... He's chilling, he's taking his time, and he's doing this on his own terms. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's been like three or four years at this point, but this is, and not only that, that he works slower. Not, not a bad thing, but yeah, he you works know. slower, but also it's his fir- company's first game. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Excuse you, whatever the hell. Um, but yeah, his first game, he's going to take even extra time to make sure that it's like right. Yeah, I feel that. So that's why I think that that one's like the furthest away. That's fair. Plus, at least for the other two games, we've seen... We've seen gameplay. Or at least simulated yeah, gameplay. Yeah, like, looking at you, Last of Us. I haven't even fucking seen Norman Reedus pull out a gun yet. Yeah. And you know it's gonna be there. You think so? Fucking FedEx boy's a gun on him? Delivery boy? If there's no... You can't have, like... You can't be, like... A, there's, like, one of the trailers, like... Troy Baker's villainous character is, like... Someone's, like, a demon dog with a mask. It's, like... What, am I just going to, like, run with a body on my back and, like, hide behind a rock? Like, no, there's going to be some sort of weird-ass, like, sh- invisible like gun. Like, void rifle that I just shoot? There's, there's some kind of, like, there's probably going to be, like, a weird scanner to maybe see these invisible things. Yeah. Yeah. Or you'll probably have to, oh, uh, you might have to, like, use that weird little thingy on your back to, like, know the, where the invisible enemy is. The blinky boy. And, like, footprints. I think boss fights in that game are going to suck. They're going to be mad hard. I hope there's boss fights in that game. Yeah, I'm sure there will be. Yeah, that was a fun little game. Yeah. Good for you. Um, next bit of news. Sony and Microsoft explore strategic partnership. Uh, I got this one just from Microsoft.com. It was like their official post. Uh, Sony Corporation and Microsoft Corporation announced on Thursday that the two companies will partner on new innovations to enhance customer experiences in their direct-to-customer entertainment platforms and AI solutions. Under the Memorandum of Understanding, signed by the parties, the two companies will explore joint development of future cloud solutions in Microsoft's Azure to support their respective game and content streaming services. In addition, the two companies will explore the use of current Microsoft Azure data center-based solutions for Sony game and content streaming services. By working together, the companies aim to deliver more enhanced entertainment experiences for their worldwide customers. These efforts will also uh, include better uh, building better development platforms for the content creator community. Uh, I'm sure you heard about this news this, earlier in the week. The way I see this is Xbox knows that they're never going to catch up to Sony, and this is a way for them to help their own tech and also have Sony pay them at the same time. See, I disagree. I feel like this is Sony and Microsoft realizing that, that too. both of their streaming services are not up to par with what's coming in the future. Like with this uh, Google Stadium Arcadium with fucking uh, Amazon, whatever the fuck they're doing. Well, like, the- I feel like they see the competition coming and they see what the future holds. Netflix fucking getting into gaming or whatever they're doing. And they want to make sure, like, they'd rather, it's like the enemy of my enemy becomes my friend. It's not even that. It's, they know that, like, if Xbox makes dope cloud services, PlayStation's going to get it too. And probably exactly. be almost exactly the same. So, like, why not just cut out, like, the pissing contest and just, like, let's get our shit good right now. I think it's one of those things where the two of them have a, it's like a good blood rivalry, where they like being rivals with each other, and it's one of those things of, like, we want to stay relevant in this industry, we're going to work together yeah. to make sure we keep our presence known and our technology up to date with these newcomers that are going to try to bring something new to the table. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, nobody else picks on little brother but me. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, back off Google. Fuck you, Amazon. Like, Amazon's not gonna do shit. Yeah, like, you never know, dude. They're taking over the fucking world. <laughs> fucking free games with your Prime membership. Wait for yeah. it. That's how they sucker us all in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good move, though. Yeah, I mean, it's a little out of our forte. We never really hit on that business side of it. We're very, we're, we're gamers, you know what I mean? We're not businessmen. But I thought it was interesting to kind of get some points on it and... You know, consider the future and the streaming future that's coming for us, whether the world's ready for it or not, you know? A little bit of next news is more in our wheelhouse, 
And that comes from Sal Romano at Gamatsu, who reports that uh, THQ Nordic to announce two new titles at E3. Now, Saints Row, Saints Row. <laughs> yeah, I know we're both hoping that. Um, there's been some rumors that their official, the official THQ Nordic post for each game said uh, the first one says THQ Nordic is booking for an unannounced title that you will absolutely want to get in to see. I can't reveal what the title of this remake is, but it's a long-awaited return of a galactically beloved game slash franchise. This is a hands-off demo, no direct feed recording, no off-screen camera oh, recording, B-roll unedited, gameplay footage will be supplied. Um, and then the other booking they're getting for is unannounced game number two. Uh, same thing, unannounced title, can't reveal what the title of the game is, but it's a new vision of a beloved game slash franchise. There is a hands-off demo available, no direct feed recording, blah, blah, blah. So basically for the bookings, I guess they're taking at E3, they've basically put these two games out for bookings. Uh, and one is, yes, being titled as a galactically beloved game slash franchise. I didn't know that, that one was a remake. I yeah, that's what they put in there. Part. So, uh, I mean, I think it will be Destroy All Humans. That's I, what's been the big rumor. I believe the rumor. So, like, or, I never played the second one. I yeah. played the first one. Dude, it was just so much fun, like, mind control throwing people. Right? And just reading people's minds. Like, it'd be a guy walking, and he'd be like, Ah, oh, Barbara's looking fine today. Just like in the 50s, like, walking down the street. It was I like, think, what the fuck? I think what they... Do you think it would be a double collection or just the one? I hope double collection. See, the thing is... Destroy All Humans 2 was... Fine. Like, it was a great sequel. The thing is, they need to they need to make the remakes and then make a new one. Exactly. So they can add and like add more crazy stuff. Yeah. And then we, I think the second one Saints Row. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean we've heard rumors of like it might be this, it might be that. We're hoping it's Saints Row. Um, there's been some crazy thing because I also have it here in the uh, the article where it says. Um, THQ Nordic owns a large number of properties. Some of the more notable titles it has yet to make any announcements for include Destroy All Humans, Time Splitters, Kingdoms of Amalar Reckoning, and Alone in the Dark. It could be any of those. Could be Saints Row. Alone in the Dark. Uh, they've had, like... They have a list. Like, they have an insane, like, 30-something games in development. Mm -hmm. And they literally have where it says, like, announced, announced, announced. And then there's, like, three, four, five where it's, like, and Volition's one of them. Where it's, like, stamped and it says, like, top secret or, like, confidential. So, like, they are working on something with Saints Row with Volition. That's unannounced. And we... That's all, that's all but confirmed For me, the much. only kicker is, wasn't Agents of Mayhem, like, last year or the year before? Yeah. So, it's like... And you saw that nobody wanted it. No, yeah, because you made a game that looked like a multiplayer game, and it wasn't yeah. multiplayer. It mm -hmm. looked like shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping it's Saints Row. Realistically, I don't know if it's going to be. Do you think Saints Row is going to be a reboot, or do you think they'll continue with 5? Reboot. You, you, don't, you don't think... You think I think they're going to start again. Just the name's familiar... And they're gonna do something else. The companies, the, the the product has switched companies so much. Or will or will they go about the way of uh, having the end of four? They mentioned they have time travel, and will it be a game where you get to play like classic Saints Row gameplay style, going through different time but periods. But see, here's what's fucked up: is that Saints Row Four was made by Deep Silver, because Deep Silver bought um, mm -hmm. THQ. So they were basically doing, like, that's why they like they had, like, rips about, like, Dead Island in there and this and that, because those were Deep Silver. And everybody felt like, because, you know, like, there's points in Saints Row 4 where you go back to the old games and there's, like, scenes in them. Like, you literally go to Saints Row, like, 1 and 2 for a part. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the Saints Row community felt like this was Deep Silver doing, like, a celebration of everything the Saints have been for them to then in the next one kind of do their rendition of it. Like, it's a celebration of what this game and this franchise have been before we start putting our hands in the pot, you know what I mean? Um, and that's what the whole time travel thing was, is like, we're gonna reboot, soft reboot this. I think. And it, now that it's changed hands again, and it's THQ Nordic, it's like, well, now what is gonna happen? You see, the thing is, I think they can totally keep what's happened as canon, but maybe like, oh, they do go back in time, and maybe like, the protagonist, like... He knows everything that went on. He's like, we gotta make the Saints big. We become a big empire. Just like, trying to rebuild the Saints to what they were. Kind of thing. I feel like as fans of the franchise, we want them to do that. We don't want one again. No, no, no. We don't want that shit again. But I'm saying, like, is <laughs> honestly, I didn't mind, like... I, I liked what 2 was, where it was not GTA, but it was a comedy version of GTA. I liked 3 the best. Yeah, like, 3 was a fine balance. Here's 4 to me went too over the top with superpowers. It was too much. The thing much. with Saints Row that I feel like everyone always forgets to think about is Saints Row is kind of like a weird 
a mini game game with a hub world if you really look at it. Yeah, and pretty much. I wouldn't mind if they kind of got... of their insurance fraud best game. But like you would have to do those stuff to get the next mission. Yeah. It's like oh you need this much reputation to do the next mission go play insurance fraud. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be wouldn't mind if they're like re re envisioning of a beloved franchise was them kind of like toning that part down. More like, of just like open world like yeah like make. Embrace the GTA aspect of, like, I can just go to my next mission, but then, like, oh, I can go do insurance fraud if I want to make some cash or get an upgrade. Yeah. It was like, it was like oh, go go run around naked. <laughs> like, literally go run around naked so you can do the next mission. <laughs> or what if it's just, like, the concept of, like, a GTA online? Like, what if it's, like... In the Saints Row world? I can't. Open world game of service? Stop. Saints? Stop. Dude, don't do this to me. Well, it, dude, the captions like wearing, the captions like we're all saints. And you're wearing a purple shirt right now. I know, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, now I have uh, the we we threw on a last news story, but right before that, I have like a small one. I just wanted to throw in there. You look like you're oh, yeah. hammered or something. Uh, the last one I have is uh, George R. R. Martin, Mr. Railroad himself, uh, is apparently consulting what on a video game. What does the R actually stand for? I don't know. Probably I think it's just as a fantasy writer to. I think it's just a railroad. Yeah. Probably not even his real name. Uh, consults on video game out of Japan. Uh, this comes from his own personal blog. He basically was talking about like the finale of Game of Thrones and how it's the end of an era, blah blah blah. And then he says, uh, "As for me, I'm involved in a number of feature projects. Some based upon my own stories and books. Some on material created by others. There are these short films I'm hoping to make, adaptations of classic stories by one of our most brilliant, quirky, and original writers our genre has ever produced. I've also consulted on a video game out of Japan. The rumors are from software. Dark Souls Four." Or maybe, a, like, because a, they, they, they've done Dark Souls, they've done Bloodborne, they just did, uh, what's this fucking game they just put out, the Ninja One? The, uh, Ninja Gaiden, right? N no, the fucking... Sekiro. Sekiro. Um, people are speculating, maybe maybe it's not exactly Bloodborne or Dark Souls, but another kind of fantasy game set in a George R.R. R. Martin world. Would it like, be maybe he kind of, like, provided lore and, like, kind of built a world for the game and oversaw it. Which would be fucking crazy. Also, if this is true, I'm throwing a shot in the dark, and this is going to be on my E3 Xbox predictions. I'm getting that out early. This is going to be Xbox exclusive. Didn't they? Didn't they buy from software, or they're like working with them? No, they're not going to be able to buy. I'm them. thinking it's Xbox exclusive. I'm thinking it's an Xbox exclusive from software. Game I don't with think. George I don't Martin. think from software would be down. Why? Because uh, unless Xbox paid a bunch, they are. I mean, they bought five fucking studios last year. They are throwing money. Yeah. I'm t I, I've put all my chips in. Xbox is going to be amazing next gen. Oh, so I think Xbox is going to bring it to fucking Sony next year. I'm not convinced because, like, the last console, as soon as things got a little rough, they just abandoned the platform, like, really early in. No, they were they were stumbling out of the gates because they had the wrong vision for what the console should be. I hope it's they, good. I want The reason it was called the Xbox One was because they wanted to make an all-in-one entertainment system. Yeah. Because the news going around gaming at the time was that things were going the way of PC gaming and, you know, future streaming services, and consoles weren't going to be around much longer. So Xbox was trying to appease everybody. I, and PS4 was like, fuck you, here's video games, and that was the right call. I mean, we know the game is being shown at the Xbox conference, right? Didn't they confirm that? This game? Yeah. No, nothing's really known about this game. See, the thing is, he said he's a consultant on a game. That could either be a lot or not that much. Yeah, Like, he could have just popped in for a day and they could have showed him the game, and, like, he's like... And they're like, oh, you want to consult this a little bit? But you fucking know that if it's not this E3, next E3, they're going to bring him out on stage for people to go fucking nuts, for them to be like, D build build hype and be like, y'all, we got the new console coming, we have a fucking George R. R. Martin game. Also, they've it's been not, promoting the shit out that's, of... That's not what he did, though. They've been promoting the shit out of Game of Thrones on the Xbox accounts, and I can totally see some kind of partnership happening. But the thing here. is, consulting can either be like him contributing a lot, or him just kind of like reviewing over something like, oh, this is, this is good. Yeah, this is but no matter what, if how like, it's little... It's like he's writing for him. But no matter how little or how much he did, they're going to make his name big on this because he's a name. Yeah. They're, it's not like, you know, Bob Jackson, who's worked on the script, consulted the game where they're going to throw his name in, in the end credits. This is George R.R. R. Martin. I don't know, man. He's They're going to have him be a prominent part of the marketing and campaign for this game. But whatever what's more whatever hype, it is. What's more hype in E3? When, uh, Xbox bringing out George R.R. R. Martin or EA bringing out Pele again? Yeah, right? <laughs> Edge of my seat action from fucking EA. 
bring I don't out even know. I don't even know what their streaming thing they're doing is. Instead of bringing out just the car for Forza, they bring out a car with George R. R. Martin because inside. I, I was looking at like the E3 streaming schedule. It says nothing about EA on there. All it talks about is like it starts at like Sunday morning with Xbox. So I was like, okay, I don't know when the fuck EA is doing whatever they're doing. I don't even care about it's like anything. not a full conference. It's like a streaming event. Give me online Sims, or I don't care. <laughs> Sims Four is free right now. Where? Uh, Epic Game Store, I think, or EA Origin. Origin. Yeah, it's, it's Origin. Is yeah. Origins free? I think so. I think it's just a service. I'll but that. Sims Four is totally free right now. Uh, and then the last bit of news you wanted me to throw on there: Sonic movie delayed until 2020. That's good shit. Now uh, I sent you the tweet earlier from uh, what's his name, Leon Fowler. Jeff Fowler. Jeff Fowler. Director. I knew it was Fowler or something. Um, I like how it was on Valentine's Day. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I like how the picture they posted had Sonic holding a sign and he had the gloves on. Yep. That was like their hint of like, hey, we're fixing this. And his arm was blue and furry. Yeah. It's like they were like, hey, we listened. This is our little nod of like, we're fixing this. Now, you don't have Twitter, so you haven't been seeing the weirdness of Twitter yeah. on the Sonic account today, probably. Oh, no, I heard about it and I saw one of the tweets. With like where it was like the characters tweeting and yeah, it was so like it was so like voice messages. So today on Twitter they put out a video and it's the voices of Eggman, Shadow, Tails, and Sonic, and they're just doing like an AMA on uh, on Twitter and just responding to people like in their voices, and it was honestly amazing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it was weird that it was the same day as this announcement for the movie. Maybe it was just kind of like some more hype. Yeah, I feel like it's just weird for them to be at the same time. It was mad funny though. I was a bunch of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh well, yeah, kind of. It was a kind of a double thing. It was like promote. Team Sonic Racing, movie news, the big kind of hit them both. The big thing with this story, though, is basically, it seems like the director gives a fuck about Sonic. Yeah, which is cool. I'm like, like he has, like, his Twitter bio says, like, Tamer of Hedgehogs. Like, it seems like he, like, I don't know this director at all. This is his debut. So, like, and, like... I mean, That's what scares me. Yeah, it's definitely scary, but, like, the trailer seemed fine to me. Like, it's it's a, it's a movie. It's a PG movie. But like it needs it, he needs to be redesigned, and I'm glad they're actually like giving, they're committed to it. Yeah, they're committed to it, and they're not gonna fuck these animators either. Yeah. Um. Basically, yeah. if you want anything done, scream online. Yeah, exactly. That's the way and we you get, will shit get done. Your way. That's how we get shit done. We just scream until it fixes itself. But yeah. Good news. Big Sonic fan. Yep. Love him. So if there's anything you take from this episode there. today, let it be that if you want something done, be mad about it. And just yeah, insult people and yell at them until you get what you want. That's yeah. that's today's motto. Fuck you. Yeah. And then with that, we will leave you to ponder until next week what we will be discussing. If you want to play for the king with us, hit we'll us stream, up. Stream because we don't. We're two and we want three. So um, hit us up. And of you course want to be a big now, famous Twitch boy. Of course <laughs> now you want to follow us. Uh, of course you could follow the Twitter Bulldog Gaming, uh, Twitch uh, TV slash Bulldog Gaming. And then uh, Twitch TV Stallion Duck ninety two, and Twitch slash Bullhammer. I feel like we could promote just the Bullduck one because you'll see our names on it constantly. That's fine. So we're gonna do that. So Bullduck Gaming. Well, maybe we'll promote our names in the top of the show, and then at the end of the show we can promote the other one. We can't yeah. do three names in a row though. That'd yeah, be that's a lot. People are like, what are you doing to me right now? You overloading me with information. Uh, and then as always, uh, check out our buddy TDG underscore Luke. He's always streaming. Uh, Still rocking that TDG name. <laughs> yeah, he's killing it. Uh, he's keeping it alive. Uh, you can check out Movie Mayhem. They're always killing it. I'm sure we'll be back on there soon. Uh, maybe talk about the cinematic masterpiece that was Aladdin. And shout out to another friend on Twitch, a filthy weeb with three E's in weeb, I, mm -hmm. mean, I think. Because he's a, he was a boy we met through Luke, and he's another good Twitch boy. Yeah, so uh, the four of us are getting a little streaming gang going. And uh, be sure to follow us. Be sure to check us out. And we will see you next week. Next week is uh, normal show as always. Two weeks from now, June 7th, is going to be our E3 prediction show. So look forward to that coming up in two weeks. Uh, if you have E3 predictions, send us to us on Twitter. Hit us up on Twitch. Get in that chat and let us know what your E3 predictions are. Uh, we'd love to read some live on show. So uh, let us know as far as that. Um, and that's going to do it for this week for Bull Duck Gaming. We finally hit over an hour again. Yay, we did it. Love you. That's what happens when I'm not half awake when we do a show. Woo!